it is incredible. People like my grandchildren were asking me yesterday about the Queen. Who was she? What was she like? And of course, they can only picture her as a very old lady. But people of my generation, my parents' generation, she was a girl when they first got to know her. And how beautiful she was, too. So, for, I think there's a sense of the void that we now feel. But there's also a sense for everybody of reflecting on their own lives. My mother lived to be 96 years of age. And you do think about your parents, your grandparents, because she fulfilled, in a sense, that role for all of us. Her life, in many ways, is the story of our lives. Uh, and it is. She was a, a different person for different generations. But my goodness, didn't she do well to keep in touch? She could actually did. I know she could do, she could do a fist bump. She was in touch with them. <laughs> you know, she wasn't quite, she didn't like mobile phones at the dining table, but she did know how to, to work one. And to see her with Paddington Bear uh, just this last summer, only a few months ago, was a complete enchantment. I think that she wouldn't have minded being an actress. I once had a conversation with her about Windsor Castle, when she was happiest there. She talked about the war, and when she appeared in Christmas pantomimes, and said she rather enjoyed being a principal boy. Maybe yes. Well, I said, would you like to have been an actress? Well, maybe. And we could see it at the end of her life what a brilliant actress she would have been. She was superb. Um, Charles, you know, it's so interesting. It, you all know there will be tributes being paid, and you go through the period uh, periodicals and the magazines and the newspapers, and the biography is clear. The timeline of what she achieved and did in her life is very clear. But many questions about who she actually was, and one of her roles, which... She kept very, very um, strict adherence to was privacy. It's very rare to actually know who the Queen was personally. That's the fascination in a way. Of course, the, the famous uh, Victorian constitutionalist always said, do not let mad do not let daylight in on magic. And the Queen was conscious that she was a, a public person, always dressed in those bright, clear colours so that you could see where she was. She was on display. As I think it was actually Queen Victoria who said, uh, you have to be seen to be believed if you're the sovereign. But she certainly was seen to be believed. But she, she didn't let, as it were, her private life uh, go into the public area. And she didn't give interviews. But when you were with her, she was very much herself. She was very uh, unaffected. Um, she was very easy to be with. I say that, but of course she was also the queen. And there was an, always an invisible moat around her because nobody ever treated the Queen quite normally. For her, I think the loss of her mother and her sister and then her husband, the three people who could simply treat her uh, uh, as a woman, uh, that was uh, very considerable for her because nobody ever else was entirely normal with her. Her children, of course, uh, but even they uh, would bow or curtsy to her at the beginning of each day. I'm conscious standing here that I first came here as a very little boy at the time of Queen Mary's death, which was in 1953 in the run-up to the coronation that year. And Queen Mary was something of a, a role model for the Queen, very dignified. She was the widow of King George V. And King George V, the grandfather of the Queen, really gave the Queen her early lessons in kingship. And when uh, uh, Queen Mary came to greet the Queen after the death of Queen Mary's son, George VI, before she hugged her daughter uh, and kissed her, she curtsied to her, uh, saying, I, you know, I must greet you first as my queen uh, and then as my granddaughter. Hey, Charles, it's lovely to hear your stories this morning. I, and I'm, I'm so delighted that in amongst the, the uh, clear emotions that there are for many people, and of course, first and foremost, for the royal family themselves, there's a period now coming up, isn't there, what, 10 days or so, when people are going to be of mixed emotions. They're going to have their thoughts about the Queen as well as they're going to be able to smile and laugh, as you have, about the impact she's had over the years. You must. The Queen was 96 years of age. That's a long life by anybody's standards, and she filled it absolutely to the brim. Still on duty, age 96, on Tuesday, not just uh, greeting the new Prime Minister saying goodbye to the last Prime Minister, but also she gave out an honour that day uh, to her communications secretary. So she was very much on duty right to the last. So an extraordinary life 
lived to the full and a Christian life. Uh, her faith was absolute, I mean, uh, driven by duty, as we know, sustained by faith, made happy by her dogs and her horses. It was a good person leading a good life. So while we feel the sadness, we feel the personal void, we must feel for the new queen and the new king and his sister and brothers and their children. We very much feel for them as people. But at the same time, we can celebrate the most remarkable reign of somebody who has represented the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth with such consistency, uh, dignity, honor, grace, and good humor over so many years. Completely remarkable.